everybody. Happy Saturday evening live tutorial stream. Hope everyone is doing great wherever you are out there in the internet today. It is part two of our fabricated geode pendant. Hi, Sophia. So I'm going to go ahead and be finishing this up this evening. So our um, empty frame that I made in Thursday night's tutorial that looks like this is going to get um, beads and um, a bale and turn into a pendant right before your very eyes. Mm. So I'm going to do a couple things to it before I start, right? I see Carol's got the right idea. Um, so I got to do a couple things to it though before I, before I put the beads on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to texture the edges of it. And um, that's, there's no real reason for that other than I just like the way it looks. And then I'm going to patina it using liver of sulfur, which is going to turn it from this bright, shiny silver color to this kind of more gray gunmetal color, which I think looks really cool in this particular design. So, um, between last Thursday, or between Thursday's stream and tonight, I did put this in my tumbler. That's why it is nice and shiny. Um, it is one of the interesting things about patina that you, you really should polish your piece up before you patina it if you just take it straight off of your block and chunk it in the patina. The patina is not going to really adhere evenly because you're going to have all kinds of you know just junk from soldering. You're going to have fire scale, you're going to have flux residue. So you really need to clean it off, um, pickle it at the very least, um, or pickle it and give it a pretty gentle polish before you patina it. So I'm going to start with my wire on the floor. It's a good place for wire. That's where I frequently start with my wire. I know, right? Uh, that's where I frequently start with a lot of things, is by throwing them on the floor. So what I'm actually going to start with is um, my hammer and my bench block. Um, so as far as additional supplies for this evening's tutorial, um, you're going to need some beads, and I'm thinking I can probably get away with one 8-inch strand of 3mm. I'm using 3mm faceted garnet beads. Um, but I've got, I just grabbed the whole hank just in case I, what happened? <laughs> okay, hi Sally. Um, I can't fix Oh no, it's, it's <laughs> spreading! Okay, so what you should probably do is take this opportunity to do that thing you were talking about doing earlier, but it is pinned to your shoulder, so you might need to just like unwrap it and like I can hold it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious we are so not good at being fancy here at beating dreams like not even a little bit are we good at being fancy at the moment and it's been years literally years um oh no Lori tried to do last night's project with feline assistance feline assistance is adorable but rarely if ever helpful um, one of Ziggy's favorite tricks was I, I used to have a really bad habit of sitting cross-legged while I was working and balancing my tray on one leg and he would just come over and he would step on the tray. There are, well okay I don't have that couch anymore, but there were still beads in, in my ex couch that whoever picked it up from the side of the road is welcome to because there was one time where I just had an I was making a ton of earrings, I had a ton of teardrops, and he just flicked them and they went like literally inside the couch to the point I would have had to disassemble the couch in order to get the beads and I was not that attached to any of those drops. So, all right, so let's texture this baby up. So I have a chisel ended hammer. This is actually a riveting hammer, but they work really great if you want kind of a, um, <laughs> You don't, you don't want it, Tally Fett. It was, um, unfortunately, one of my kitties uh, near the end of her life had a whole lot of incidents, and they all occurred on that couch, which is why it went to the curb. The beads were not worth it, trust me. The smell was intense. Um, so if you want to make this kind of chiseled texture, a riveting hammer works great. So I'm just going to take my riveting hammer, and I'm going to gently tap around the outside of my frame. And I'm doing this on the, on the front of my frame because that's what's going to be seen. You could texture the sides if you wanted to, but you really would need to do that uh, before you soldered it. Sorry, now you're just stuck in that state until I'm done with the stream. 
poor Heather. <laughs> oh, well, good job, Allison. All right, so that's an oopsie that just happened. Obviously, this was not soldered on there properly. So that's that'll that's going to be okay. I will go ahead and solder that back on quickly before I do the rest of the project. And then I'm going to flip it over and texture the other side. another one fell off. Wow. Did not do a good job on that. But once again, it's it's good that these things happen at points like right now because I'm just going to grab my torch and my soldering board and I'm just going to re-solder it. Um, if it's, if it happens, hi me. if it happens after, you know, after you put your beads on and everything, it's so much more of a pain in the neck to fix it. So people always, you know, get upset and understandably so when, you know, you're in, cl in class and your project breaks, you know, before you've finished it. But once again, it, it's just so much better to have it break now than have it break later. All right, so I'm going to cheat just a wee skosh. I'm going to use some extra easy solder because I'm just going to pick transfer on there. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not because of where my camera's focused, but we'll see. Right, so, we're doing this the quick and dirty way since this is not supposed to be part of this evening's tutorial. You can just unpin it from your shoulder if you want. No. I'm only laughing because Diane's laughing at me. I'm fine. <laughs> Well, if you're laughing, aren't you being laughed with? Yes. We're not laughing at you, we're laughing with you. Okay, so we're laughing for you. So there you, you go. Is the laughing, I guess I just joined it. I like laughing for you. I, that is good, yeah. Alright, so it's extra easy solder. That's not even on camera, sorry. Um, extra easy solder that I placed on there, and then I'm going to grab my rings turn my torch off <laughs> right today has to go long to make up for it but I have to get we have to get into our white tie get ups it's gonna be like you know speed dressing and I really did try and dress Heather before the stream, but I didn't do it well <laughs> enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. No, but it should be on you. Well, yeah. It's not so much on you, not except for the part that's pinned to your shoulder. It's around me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I could hold it. That would be interesting. No, I don't think I could do it in this. You know, that's assuming it's I could. And say I can't hula hoop in anything, so Yeah. Alright, so I was trying to do this the quick and dirty way and that's surprisingly it didn't work. I didn't heat the whole thing up so the solder won't flow. This really has been just a hellacious week. This has been the like nothing goes right week. Yeah. I swear that's not actually every week for us even though sometimes it seems like it. T today was, or sorry, this week was really, um, this week went above and beyond to be horrible. That tweezers is getting too hot.
game are you playing, Tally Fett? I feel like I should know this, but I don't. It does sound fun. Is that a phone game or like a Switch game? Haha! <laughs> Hi, good vibes! <laughs> Welcome back! What do you mean, local? <laughs> I mean, PC game. The internet's just all one big community, right? Yeah, fair. Hi, Corvus. What's up? Alright, so for those of you who are just joining us, what I'm doing... I'm trying to do it on camera is um, fixing my project from Thursday because um, two of my rings came off when I was texturing it. I need to put them back on before I can continue with the project in the part that I was supposed to do tonight, just putting the, um, texturing it, doing the patina, and putting on the beads, um, which I will still be able to do, but I need to solder these stupid rings back on first. So I got one back on, that's that one there, and I'm working on this one here. I think I got that. I only melted my finger a little bit. Hey! Okay, so now hopefully all of those are going to stay. I mean, I've definitely forgotten how to do fancy, so we're gonna see how the black, how the white tie stream goes. Cause I used to be good at fancy, but then there was a pandemic, and I forgot how. Mm. Okay, so while that cools down, we're gonna talk for a minute about patina. Okay, so I already textured it with my hammer. That was when the things fell off of it. Oh, hey, look, there's my camera. Um, look, it's it's inadvertent project placement of my Logitech camera. Um, so I textured it, made the little um, cuts with the hammer, and I did that on both sides of the front. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to patina it. I'm going to patina it using a chemical called liver of sulfur, um, which is uh, potassium sulfide, I believe we googled that um, at some point in the past. Uh, this is this in my hand is one of the best inventions <laughs> in the jewelry industry in forever. Um, this is gel liver of sulfur. Um, it has an almost indefinite shelf life. Um, back when I started metal smithing, liver of sulfur was only available in little granules in like one of those stupid cans that you have to like pry the lid off with a screwdriver and then pound it back on with a hammer. And eventually what would happen is um, despite all efforts to keep it sealed, your can would, you know, moisture would get in there and then the, the liver of sulfur granules would just kind of all glom together in this like yellow sulfur smelling useless because once they, once they did that they wouldn't dissolve anymore. Absolutely useless, just block of awful. And unless you were running a really, really, you know, full production metal shop where you're going through it all the time, you know, you'd end up throwing away half a can. So this is great stuff. Um, so this one is by Beadsmith. I think um, there's a number of companies that make this. So if you're going to use liver of sulfur, I highly recommend the gel. It's really, really easy to use. So I have some hot water here. Hopefully it's still hot enough. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of the, the gel in there. And my water is going to turn from a lovely um, water clear color to a lovely 
um, piss yellow color and it's gonna stink because sulfur and then I'm gonna drop my piece in there and assuming the water is hot enough it should oxidize it and turn it um, to that gunmetal color and it's working a little slowly because it's not super hot but you can you can literally see it turning darker before your very eyes chemicals at work science I can smell the science mm -hmm. it smells like rotten eggs or demons depending on how much supernatural you watch um, same same <laughs> so it's almost there it needs a little bit more time um, it's kind of like pickle the hotter it works um, or, sorry, the hotter it works. No, the hotter it is, the better it works. Sorry. The hotter it works, the lower it falls. <laughs> yeah, so, so, if, if this had been fresh hot water, it would be done by now, since it's not, it's just taking a little bit more time. Um, but it does bring up a good, um, point about liver of sulfur. So, a lot of people will be like, well, I don't want it completely gunmetal. Can't you just, you know oxidize it just a little bit and the answer is no because this is basically um it's like the the natural oxidizing process of silver so it doesn't it doesn't just go from light gray to middle gray to dark gray it actually goes through a series of colors and there are some artist, artists out there i am not one of them um but there are some people out there who are way cooler than me who are really good at controlling the the colors that they get with their liver of sulfur because you can see there's a blue in there there's purple there's kind of a green and there's kind of a, a bronzy color. So so that's actually, this side right here is a pretty much a progression of what happens when you put it in the liver of sulfur. It gets that golden color first, then green, then the blue, the purple, and then finally the gunmetal. So it was really convenient of my piece to, to do that so I could show that to you. So if you want something to be lightly antiqued as opposed to being dark gunmetal gray, um, what you do after you pull it out of the liver of sulfur is you grab some steel wool and then you can steel wool off some of that patina and then what that does is it leaves the patina just in the low points like in the, you know, the relief of your design and um, that, especially if you have a complicated design, is really cool because it'll sort of bring it out. Sorry, this is just like barely warm now. Sorry, I'm rustling. I don't think anybody cares that you're rustling. As long as you're not rustling cattle. Not in this outfit. <laughs> well, especially not in that outfit in that state. <laughs> okay, so we're going to call could that frighten the cattle. sufficiently oxidized. It could try use, to fight them. It could use a little bit more time, but we're just going to go ahead and go on. So, so see, it's not completely gunmetal. You can see it's still got some of that goldy color. But we're going to go ahead and go on. So if I wanted to, I could take some steel wool and I could just steel wool like that. And so see how that gives me more kind of an antique silver look as opposed to the gunmetal look. And now since I did it on one part, of course I have to do it on all of the sides. Also, this pendant really doesn't have a front or a back. So you could, you know, polish one side and leave the other side with the dark and just make it be reversible. But I think I'm going to do the steel wool on both sides. You can do it on the edges if you want, but you don't have to. Alright, there we go. So now we're ready to add our beads. So to add my beads, I'm going to use some 26 gauge uh, sterling silver wire. Well, hey Mandy! How are you? How's everything? You need to tune in at 7.30. We'll be wearing tiaras. Right now I'm in my pre-tiara look. Alright, so I've got my 26 gauge sterling silver wire. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna make sure I've got a strand of beads that's that's okay. The audience doesn't have to wear one, though we won't, you know, shame anybody who does, but Heather and I will be wearing tiaras. Yes. After this week, you definitely should. I will make you one. 
Okay, so I've got beads open and ready to go. So I'm gonna take my wire and I'm going to insert it up through my hole. So I've drilled a small hole right in the center top of this. Um, that's a, oh, I can't remember what side, it was like a 62 drill bit, something like that. Um, so pretty small one, it just needs to be uh, big enough to accommodate your wire twice. So I'm gonna start by putting my wire up through my hole and then I'm gonna string on enough beads to go from here to here. Oh, that's good. Yay for everyone being alive and intact. So I'm gonna try three. Yes, Heather is not wrong. We do have a customer from whom we literally, if, she, if we see her walk in the door, um, nope, it's not three, it's two. Three's too many, so two. Um, if we see her walk in the door, all the food immediately goes to the back room. She has, she and her husband both are egregious stealers of food that is not theirs. So the reason I'm using 26 is it's going to have to make some pretty sharp bends. So you need something that's fairly flexible. So this is 26 and it's dead soft. So now I'm going to go ahead and go from here to here. Just stringing my beads straight onto my wire, nothing crazy going on here. That might have been way more than I needed. We'll see in a minute. So make sure you don't accidentally yank this wire down through because you do need, oh gee, I wonder why. Um, but uh, yeah, this, you need that later, so don't pull it back through. Okay, so that is a good amount, so now I'm going to go through this loop. Yep, he totally did that. that through so see this is why you need some wire that's fairly flexible because it's going to it's going to want to kink like that but there you go now from there to there we do we actually have a brick and mortar retail storefront here in dallas texas on lover's lane it's not like palatial or anything i mean Heather and I are combined sitting in like a six foot by six foot area. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it's, it's been a streaming journey for us. Um, when everybody got shut down for the pandemic, um, I did start streaming. Um, we should, I, yes, I'm working on I think Asa figured out how I could do that and now I've forgotten. But yes, Heather has given a Zoom shop tour, but maybe next Freeform Friday I'll take y'all on a, I'll figure out how to take y'all on a shop tour with my phone and show you um, what it actually looks like behind the curtain here. Um, but yeah, so when we got shut down for the pandemic um, two years ago, March, I did start streaming from my home because we were in shelter in place here in Dallas, so we literally weren't allowed to go anywhere that wasn't essential. Uh, then when we were able to open back up, I um, <laughs> we were able to open back up, I was streaming from home and then coming here and then going home to stream and then when it, it was pretty, we should do that. Thank you, Heather. See, everyone should have a Heather, but you can't have mine. 
No, because I work here. Um, you do. And right now you're tethered to that chair with like... I am a bitch. Ten feet of fabric. Um, but yeah, so once it was, once it stabilized and I was pretty sure we were going to be able to stay open, then I moved all the streaming stuff here to the shop. I do also have a streaming set up at home and occasionally I will, um, skive off work early on a Friday and go stream from home instead of here. You can tell I'm at home because there will be cats on the stream. Big butt. <laughs> exactly. One of my cats really likes to show his butt to the internet. It's like his favorite thing. It's to just jump up and like show his ass to the camera. It's a cute butt. But it is a cute butt. I mean, if you like cat butts. Which, by the way, Tally Fett, um, Heather I has her. It. It's right here. Heather has your cat butt. I do. Oh, Diane, you never told me which blacklight pendant you wanted. Oh. I didn't look at them. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yes, I was, and, and every, you can thank Ace for the cat butt, because it was his idea. And I found, and this is, I'm not paid, I'm not paid to, to plug this, but I found an adorable, because my, my blacklight pendants, um, I make using rubber stamps, because I can't draw, like, at all. Not even a little bit can I draw. I can barely make a stick figure. I, I can draw reasonable diagrams for making jewelry, but that's pretty much it. Um, so I found this awesome... Yeah, I found this awesome stamp company. Okay, so those are those are the cat butts, the top one of which is now Tally Fett. Um, but I found a stamp company called Sniggle Sloth. And um, they're awesome and they have the cutest stamps and they have and then the thing that I really love since now I'm making pendants and earrings is they have all of their stamps come in four sizes three or four sizes they come in like half inch three quarter inch and one inch and there may be a size bigger than one inch may, there may be a one and a quarter of exactly the same stamp which is amazing so I don't actually know, I know I'm supposed to be making a pendant, but I want to see if they actually have a website that I can link to in the chat because I love their product and I know um, I've been getting them off of Amazon. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yes, I know that they can make custom stamps, Mandy, but honestly, for this particular product, um, the margin is not high enough for that for me. I need to get something that's reasonably priced and easily obtainable. Also, see previous re- I can't draw. So, um, the Sniggle Sloth ones are really, really cute and fun, and exactly the vibe that I like for the um, blacklight pendants. So anyway, back to putting beads on. So this is from there to my next loop. And again, I'm going to take it and just thread through. And just try and keep try and keep your wire from kinking. Okay, so this is my second to last one. I need to go from there to there now. Okay. Well, I will keep that in mind, but for now, I will just buy the cute Sniggle Sloth stamps and be happy with them. Because I can buy them in the middle of the night, and then they bring them to my doorstep. I like this. Of course, part of me thinks I should be banned from shopping in the middle of the night, because that's when I get into the most trouble. Okay, so I put a few too many, oh dear, uh, a few too many on there, so I'm going to remove two. 
Does Magpie not want you on the internet, Amy? Does she want attentions instead? Mamie would be smart enough to do that. Ziggy, not so much. Okay, so Mamie has decided. So now I'm uh, going to thread through this. So Mamie has decided that uh, 6.45 a.m. is when she would like, hi Mandy, on the dark side. Um, Mamie has decided that 6.45 a.m. is when she would like her breakfast to be served. And she will just sit and meow in my ear until I wake up. And the problem is when I wake up, then I have to pee. So I can't just like pull the covers over my head and be like, no, cat, go away, because I have to pee. And so then I get up, and then of course as long as I'm up, I might as well feed her. So I'm totally reinforcing her bad behavior, but she's just like, hi, Miss Boombox Brittany, welcome, I love your cat, react. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've been getting up at 6.45 a.m., which is not, by the way, my preferred time to get up, considering that, you know, I work usually until at least 7 at night or later. But the Mandy, not the Mandy, the Mamie cat does not care. She wants her breakfast served promptly at 6.45. Okay, so I got myself in a bit of a jam here. See how that wire is kind of just twisted out there and I can't get it to pull through. So what I'm actually going to have to do is going to Oh my god. <laughs> well, as long as your cat's not trying to make a long distance call. All right. So what I did is I just had to straighten that out and then I'm hoping I can just yank this up through. We're gonna see how this goes. If I break my wire, I'm gonna say profane words. Nope, it worked. So there we go. So that is all the beads on my geode pendant. So now I've got two wires coming out the top here. Now I like to make my hang loop using both of my wires because it's 26 gauge, it's not very thick. So um, having two of them makes it a little bit more sturdy. So I am going to make, surprise, surprise, a, a basic wire wrap loop. See, Mimi just wakes me up and then lets my bladder do the rest. And she's got this tiny little high-pitched meow. And she'll just keep mewing until I, you know, get my ass out of bed and feed her. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to... No, I was the one summoning the demons with the sulfur. Good vibes. I don't think the cat summoned the demons. Hope not. Alright, basic wire wrap loop. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to hold so they're touching the top of my frame. And I'm going to use both of my wires just like they were a single wire. So I'm going to push away from me to make a 90 degree angle on top of my pliers. Loosen my pliers, rotate, and grab. I rotated about an eighth of a turn, so I'm grabbing right on that corner. Then I'm going to pull my wires back over, up over the top towards me and down. So I'm starting to make, as you can see, a, a loop is the word I'm looking for on my pliers. Then I'm going to loosen, rotate, grab again, and finish my loop. So I'm, I'm traveling the same direction with my wire. I'm going to finish my loop by pushing underneath my pliers and away from me, and that is, as we all know, our lady with a scarf. Now I'm going to hold across my loop. Um, when you do this with two wires, you're probably going to squish your wires so they're not parallel anymore. We're going to fix that in a minute, so don't worry so much about that. Just give yourself a good grip. Take both of those wires and just wind them around the base until you reach your frame, just like with a regular wire wrap. Like so. Figure out where you put your wire cutter. And we're going to trim. And then you're going to press in the pokey stabby part of your end, like so. Oh, 
I, I would never think that would be a fun experience. No, no, I shall pass on that good vibes. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Um, but yeah, in the, on my list of things I want to do in my life, that actually going to haunted places, I can't even with the with the that. So um, hopefully Mamie's not summoning um, Mamie's not summoning any demons because I don't really want to have that experience ever, ever, ever. Um, okay, and that's our hang loop. So you can do two things with your hang loop. Um, you can face it this way, in which case. Um, this is good if you want to hang it on something, um, sorry, that's liver of silver, something out of your finger. If you want to hang it on something thicker, because then you can put a bigger jump ring, um, because making a, a very large loop out of the 26 gauge wire just really is not advisable. So if you want to hang it on something that requires a big loop, what you do is make a small loop with a 26 gauge and then make yourself a jump ring to go through that. Um, or you can turn it sideways. This is good if you want to string it on a thin leather or a thin chain. Um, and you can just put it straight through there. Also, if you um, if you need to, you can rotate this um, a quarter of a turn, but don't do it too much. I mean, it's basically, you know, you, you got one or two shots to be like, oh shoot, I made the wrong choice, and I'm gonna fix it. But if you twist this too much, it's gonna snap off, and then you're gonna have to redo this whole beaded piece because this is all, of course, part and parcel. But did successfully, despite some mild setbacks, finish my fabricated geode pendant. Um, you can make this pendant any size. You can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. Um, you could, I was thinking it would be kind of cool to figure out how to make some nested ones. That may be a future project, but for now, that's the end of our fabricated geode pendant. So thank you all so much for hanging out. With us here, oh, and as far as how many beads I used, I actually only used half of an eight-inch strand of four of three millimeter beads. So at the size that I made mine, which is about two inches long in its longest point, that's the amount of beads that I used. So thank y'all so much for hanging out with me on the Beading Dreams live tutorial stream this evening, this uh, Saturday evening. Sorry, apparently I can't tie a knot and talk at the same time. So we will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in about half an hour with our white tie sale. That's the debut of new merchandise. All the things that you saw in the unboxing, they're priced, they're ready for purchase. Um, and Heather and I are glamming it up with um, fancy dresses and tiaras. So we're going to go tiara fly ourselves. And we'll be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream with that sale in just about half an hour, 40 minutes, 7.30, 7.45. If you're not going to join us for the sale, please join us on one of our tutorials next week. We do stream on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream five times a week. Um, we stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights at 6 p.m. with a complimentary tutorial plus Thursdays at noon and live merchandise sales every Wednesday and every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. So... We're going to go get glam, and we'll see y'all back on this channel with new merchandise, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, in half an hour. See y'all soon.